In this customer support video, I want to show you how to install the Access Protocab components into a ready to run model. In this case, the Backman London and North Eastern Railway V2 class locomotive. We will be making some alterations to the locomotive, which will almost certainly invalidate the Backman guarantee. I've chosen this locomotive because it appears to be a very straightforward conversion. We can probably install all the protocab components in the tender and run two wires to the motor which will need to be isolated from the chassis and wheels. As always, the first step is to check the stall current of the locomotive to make sure it does not exceed the current rating of the loco control unit and battery. If you're not certain how to do this, you'll find details in our video 5 Bravo 02 how to check the stall current of your locomotive. Let's get started. Lay down a piece of cloth, or in this case a piece of kitchen roll, to protect the paintwork of the locomotive as you work on it. It's also essential to ensure that the chassis is running as freely as it possibly can. To remove the plastic body, there is a fixing screw underneath the cab above the pony truck. The locomotive is manufactured using a split chassis, which means that each vertical half of the chassis is electrically separated from the other half. The advantage of this arrangement is there is no need for separate pickups wiping on the back of each wheel. The wheels themselves are electrically live and insulated from each other by a plastic bush. However, the bogey and pony truck at the front and back of the locomotive do have pickups that feed wires to the two halves of the split chassis. In this example, we don't want to retain the pickups on the wheels, so the first job is to unsolder the pickup wire on the four copper tabs attached to the chassis. The pickup on the front bogey is collected through the axle box that is used to suspend the bogey wheels. Shown here, secured in place by a pair of screws, unsolder the pickup wires from these two plates. The axle on the pony truck, however, is retained by the side frames, which means you can remove the pickups completely from the pony. The four copper pads on the chassis are retained by a pair of screws and two insulated bushes. All of this can now be removed. To remove the pickups from the pony truck, you need to remove the pony truck from the chassis, but be very careful as there is a suspension spring which might easily fly away. The pickups are held in place by the side plates. Opening the side plates slightly will release the pickups. You will need to unsolder the copper tabs in order to release the wire through the chassis. Replace the pony truck, making sure that the small plastic washer is located between the spring and the chassis. The cable included with your locomotive control unit pack can now be trimmed to size. Because we will be using the new 9121 extension cable, which will enable us to disconnect the tender from the locomotive, we do not need to run the cable all the way back to the locomotive control unit, which will be situated in the tender. Trim the cable so that the white connector on the cable can reach the coupling housing on the tender with a small amount of slack. It is essential to ensure that not only are the terminals of the motor completely isolated from the chassis, but also the two halves of the chassis are kept electrically insulated from each other. This will require disassembling the chassis completely, so start by unscrewing the keeper plate from beneath the chassis block. The front bogey and the rear pony truck do not have to be taken off the keeper plate before removing it, although in this example I did actually remove them uh, in order to clean them up. With the retaining screws removed, the keeper plate can now be unclipped from the front and the rear of the chassis block. Carefully pull the cylinder mouldings off the spigots on the chassis block. Unscrew the radius rod from the protruding spigot on the chassis block. The die block can now be removed from the chassis block and the wheel sets can now be removed from the chassis as well. 
The next step is to separate the two halves of the chassis block by unscrewing the four screws and removing the insulating bushes that the screws are fed into. But be very careful because as you separate the two halves, be careful that there are four washers and three spacing plates whose positions on the chassis you need to note. Each terminal of the motor is electrically connected to the respective half of the chassis through a spring that also acts as a damper. As you can see from here, when the motor is replaced, having taken the spring away, there's very little space between the motor terminal and the chassis metal. So one has to be very careful to insulate this piece carefully. With the limited space available between the terminals and the chassis block, I assess that the easiest way would be to remove the springs, to drill two holes where the springs were, and then run the cables from the motor terminals to the LCU through those two holes. Having drilled the holes to 2mm, I then coated the inside of the holes liberally with epoxy resin, and then fed in two pieces of 2mm plastic to insulate the wire from the metal of the chassis. I then fed the first bare wire end of the 9953 LCU to motor cable through the hole and then soldered it to one terminal of the motor. I repeated the exercise for the other motor terminal, feeding the wire through the other hole, and then applied a copious amount of hot glue to the motor terminals. The next step has to be carried out pretty quickly. Before the hot glue has had time to set, put the motor back into its position, pull the cables through the two holes and compress the two sides of the chassis block together. You don't need the spacers at this stage, all you're trying to do is to compress the, the hot glue into the shape of the recess formed by the terminal and where the springs originally were. The aim is to have sufficient insulation around the motor terminals and the wires leading into them and to prevent the motor from moving around inside the chassis block. When you're happy that all is well and everything's fitting nice and tightly, I dab a piece of glue stick onto each of the washers to hold them in place whilst uh, moving the two halves of the chassis block together, remembering to replace the spacers at the bottom of the block. Lastly, make sure that the nylon thrust washer on the motor shaft is properly engaged in the slot in the chassis block and that the motor and worm wheel are free to rotate without any obstruction. It's essential to make sure that the cable does not touch any moving parts. Also, make sure that the cable is not pinched when the body is replaced on the chassis. Before going any further, we can now test that the battery is supplying power to the motor and that the LCU is working properly. In this example, the LCU has already been adopted to button B on the controller. We are also testing here that stalling the locomotive does not cause the LCU to reset.